fortunate to have the B.I. Moody College of Business Administration and the Small Business Development Center at UL Lafayette supporting this meeting. The B.I. Moody College of Business currently enrolls over 2,000 undergraduate students pursuing a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. Students can major in eight areas of business, accounting, economics, finance, hospitality management, insurance and risk management, marketing, and professional land and resource management. Right now, there's about 225 graduate students enrolled in the MBA program and the, um, the Master of Science of Accounting program. And also with us today is the um, Small Business Development Center at UL, an award-winning center with a highly qualified team of consultants who have been recognized by their peers for top quality consulting services. They've been open since 1983, and they have a reputation for, for offering top-notch help. LSBDC um, serves the eight parishes of Acadiana, including Acadia, Evangeline, Iberia, Lafayette, St. Landry, St. Martin, St. Mary, and Vermilion. And I wanna personally thank Dr. Gwen Fontenot for agreeing to sponsor our meeting. We've also gotten to be friends, as well as Heidi Melanson with the SBDC. You've been very supportive of Upper Lafayette's efforts to help small business in particular, and I've enjoyed our partnership teaching classes on the art of negotiation to UL business students. I've asked uh, Dr. Gwen Fontenot to come up and just say a few words for us. Would you please join me in welcoming Gwen Fontenot? <laughs> Thank you, Jan. It's, it's a privilege to be here today and to be a part of this great event. Uh, when Jan contacted me, she told me what was going on and what they were planning, and I was just honored that she wanted the college to be a part of it. So uh, I've had the opportunity, as Jan said, over the last two years to get to know Jan and work with her, and then also to learn more about the great works from Upper Lafayette. So uh, one of the reasons that we wanted to be a part of this today is because like the foundation, we are very interested in being a catalyst for change in our community. And we do that through our students and them working with the community as well. So we seek every opportunity we can for our students to have internships, to do experiential learning, to have hands-on with companies such as those that are represented here today. So we appreciate your work in helping us do that with our students. Uh, we usually are the ones seeking sponsorships for events like this, but when Jan called today, I knew that this was the perfect opportunity and it's what we needed to do as a college and with the LSBDC. So we really want to thank you all for giving us this opportunity, Jan, and thank you all for participating today. Thank you, Jan, for inviting me to be part of today's lunch, and I'm, I'm happy to be here, happy to see all the representation from wonderful Upper Lafayette organizations and to be with such movers and shakers as J.D. and Patrick and everyone here. So thanks for joining us. Um, I started thinking about branding and it's basically what I do every day for the company. Um, the company started many years ago, 130 years ago, if you hadn't heard, um, we just officially had our 130th anniversary on Sunday. Um, the bank started in New Iberia in 1887. Here's a snapshot. Another New Iberia connection, right? With one location in, in New Iberia. And um, so we celebrated the, the anniversary and gave away money. Um, not an easy thing to do when you're federally regulated, um, have a big legal and compliance department, but we did. So we gave away almost $30,000 worth of cash. Hopefully um, there's winners represented here today. I know there were some in the Acadiana area. Uh, our Facebook page reveals the winners, so check it out. So, so we've grown from this little sleepy bank in New Iberia, Louisiana, and we now, oh, this is more, I'm sorry, I may, forgot about this slide. Um, we gave away chocolates. Um, if you guys were out and about in the community the last three or four weeks or so, we had uh, branded chocolate bars with our 130th uh, promotion on how to register to win. So what started as uh, one little sleepy bank in uh, New Iberia, Louisiana grew to be, this is our footprint, over eight states, 200 branch locations, um, one of the largest, the largest banks in, headquartered in Louisiana one of the strongest banks in Southeast Louisiana and uh, still very homegrown and so proud to call ourselves headquartered here in Upper Lafayette and downtown. So brand consistency is really important to us. If you look at our geographic um, footprint here, we, uh, 
we don't do the same things necessarily in Lafayette or Lake Charles or New Iberia, um, and, and justifiably so because the communities are different. Um, there's a lot of similarities, but, but what makes up a community is very diverse. So we have about 30 different markets across the footprint, um, and no two are the same. Our greatest assets we, we have are our associates, and that's really where our brand begins. Um, we've got smart, dynamic folks across the footprint, about 3,000 of them, that, um, that march every day toward our company's goals and to meet the needs of all of our clients. And we have about 500 just here in Acadiana. So they're our best resources to really help us um, brand ourselves in the communities that we serve. They're all involved in the community and we encourage, um, we encourage and empower our associates to get very involved in the community. And with a market-centric model, um, every market that we represent, we have direct leadership in that market. So if you know the Jerry Vasca queue here in this market, we've got kind of a Jerry Vasca queue in each of our, in our regions that, that make local decisions, including community involvement decisions. So our dollars are really our important investments, and it's through our associates that we build this strong community partnerships, investing in education, financial literacy, the arts, um, social services throughout the communities. So we spend, we spend a lot of dollars there, what a lot of companies, a lot of financial institutions would use as their advertising dollars, their marketing dollars, through the community partnerships that we've developed. Um, it's certainly, we do traditional advertising, traditional marketing, direct mail as well, but the biggest component for us is really kind of person to person through those relationships. Um, so we rely on our associates to help us determine um, kind of our best investments in those markets. Jan, you were asking about, you know, stepping into a new market. How do you know? Well, that's happening right now in South Carolina. Uh, I'm sorry, North Carolina. And um, we've got a new banking team being built there. Um, we move into markets that either have a healthy bank, if it's a, a bank acquisition, or we know a banking team. Um, or a banking leader in that community that's, that's ready for, um, to come on board, likes our philosophy and likes our, our goals and mission. And uh, it's really always about the people, um, and that's where it really began. So you'll see in Greenville how that's going to unfold through the coming months and the, the coming years as we develop the partnerships in that community um, with the relationships that are being built there. We've got, I think, three associates on the ground right now. That's a de novo location. We didn't have a branch there already. We hired a team, and we will have brick and mortar at some point in the near future. So, um, so our, our branding is really through the community involvement. We keep in mind, um, here in Lafayette, may not work. Something we're doing here may not work in Little Rock, for instance. Um, well, although we do have a signature event in Little Rock that's a sponsored crawfish boil that benefits a, um, a cancer service center there that's really important in the medical community. Um, and, and that goes over well. But there's not always um, a very aligned consistency with what we're doing here and what we're doing there. Um, and it really depends on the target audience we're trying to reach. Um, that's an event that, that you know, uh, gets us out to the masses. There's thousands and thousands of people out of that field seeing our brand um, and and also a lot of our associates are very involved on that organization's board of directors so um, what's happening in Houston is probably not necessarily going to be what's happening in Miami which is what our latest acquisition announcement was um, just recently so that MSA is going to be um, really new for us we've got a um, an incredible banking team there that's going to be officially Iberia Bank um, anticipated the second half of this year. So um, look for some interesting branding um, out, out of that Miami area as well. We're already in Florida and throughout most of Florida except the Panhandle area. And, um, and so we, we've done a, an interesting job, a lot of advertising actually in the, um, in the Florida markets because we're so new. The name was not very familiar to them. Mostly in the southern region, some of the banks had heard of us, some of the communities had heard of us, but um, we've put quite a bit of advertising dollars there t initially to educate them on who we were, who we are. So our markets are diverse. Um, you have to first, of course, define your goal, who you're trying to get your products and or services in front of, um, know your target audience, how, how, to, 
how to best kind of partner with them, if you will, and the approach to reach them. Um, you know, from an ad advertising perspective, not all of our markets have an advertising budget. We, we don't always budget print advertising or um, email advertising or um, social media advertising. It just kind of really depends on the makeup of the market. Um, here in Acadiana, we, we do do print advertising. Um, we, because we're headquartered here, we're a known brand. So it's, it's certainly different outside of this region. So we have to be very strategic with our budgeting and our creative ideas on how, how to reach the folks we want to reach. Um, I spend a lot of time with our market leadership across the footprint, um, many of which I spend a, on a weekly basis, sometimes bi-weekly, discussing with my team how we can support their goals, um, whether it's consumer banking through the retail branches, uh, working with the private banking group and their clients, uh, commercial business banking, it, it just really varies what the goals are. So we take the time, um, sometimes two hours, and in the Acadiana market, no kidding, um, we have a small group of, of our leadership here that meets that often to go through not only ideas that we have in supporting, but uh, the community requests that we, we receive. Um, we have so many wonderful and worthy organizations, but we have a very limited budget uh, and can't support them all, or at least all at once. So we meet on a very regular basis. Um, the model is very similar throughout all the footprint that we, that we use this model for to really hone in on what we're trying to achieve. And um, the communication is key, um, defining the ultimate goal and, uh, of course, measuring the end result once you make your decisions and, and decide which route to go. Um, we also come up with our own efforts to touch an organization or a target audience. Um, we've launched food truck events um, to benefit local food pantries throughout the footprint that's been very successful for us. Um, there's a lot of social media that goes along with that and uh, very well received. It's amazing. You put a food truck in front of your branch and just kind of tweet it out and people just come. Um, we, we've done events of that nature where we've paid for the food. We've done events where we just said, you know, come support the food pantry, drop off your, your goods and um, and they buy their own food. <laughs> so it, it's kind of interesting, and the, um, the branding that we get out of it is immense. Um, of course, there's community goodwill. We, I, I don't know a banker that works for us. We, by the way, Iberia Bank Banking Team right over here. Thank you for representing Upper Lafayette meeting. Um, they're all so involved. I'll bet just that one table, I don't know, 50 organizations, I'm sure, that, that you guys are involved with throughout the year. So. Um, that's really key. I mean, they, they're doing it for the right reasons, and along with that comes branding for the company because those are our folks um, right there networking with other organizations and other board members and supporting those causes that are so important to our communities. So we put a lot of creative thought in how we can stand out. Um, seldom do we simply write a check. So um, we get very involved with an organization. They could pitch us on something that we feel like is a good fit for whatever reason. Um, we probably drive a lot of those organizations crazy with kind of wanting to tweak their benefit package for our, our investment. Um, just this week I was on the phone with uh, Kim Newstrom, I don't know if she's here, with um, Big Brothers Big Sisters talking about an event she has coming up and um, trying to figure out what's the best bang for our buck and we're kind of rewriting her whole benefit package on what we're looking at and I'm sure she's um, kind of tired of me <laughs> taking her benefit package and investing it differently. but. But it's important to, to make sure that you are represented in the way that you want to be whenever you're sponsoring events. So um, always ask. We do leverage our partnerships for years. We've supported UL and UL Athletics and uh, proud partners in, in many organizations. We, um, with our 130th anniversary campaign, we reached out to the um, athletics department and said, hey, you'll have your first baseball game coming up in a couple of weeks. And we kind of have this promotion going on and we want to give away a bunch of candy bars. Can we go out there and just welcome everybody and give about 130 chocolate bars away? And they said, yeah, okay, sure. And so it was well received. Um, yeah, there was even, I think, a photo in, in uh, one of the social media um, newspapers. So that was, that was fun. So you, you, get, you get some real benefit out of something that you're just doing sort of a goodwill with the obviously branding of the 130th anniversary and the giveaway as well. 
So during that campaign, we had um, ambassadors from all of our markets. We had not just frontline bankers, but we also had back office teams. I encourage you to build your teams. Let them brainstorm with you. Um, even though somebody in your business may not be frontline, they might have some really creative ideas and ways to touch people that you may not be thinking. So the more folks that you have kind of on the ground or in the thought process, it's really, it's really could be very beneficial for you. Um, I've worked, I wanted to mention I've worked with both JD and um, not directly with Patrick, but certainly with the advertiser and their group on, on different campaigns. Um, with the advertiser most recently when we um, merged Tesh Federal Bank with Iberia Bank, we had a, um, w a, an ambitious advertising campaign to welcome the clients to Iberia Bank, um, to let them know of locations and what, what have you. Uh, we also worked with JD. Um, after a couple of acquisitions out of market, introducing them to uh, Cane River Pecans, we sent our associates, all the new associates, sort of a welcome to the family, uh, wonderful tin full of Cane River Pecans. So, so it's great to have these partnerships in the community. Um, so anyway, making sure that you identify identify the goals, make sure you've got the right teams, discuss, discuss your opportunities, uh, determine your target audience and the best approach to meet them. Uh, engage your team and get everybody hands on deck. Um, and that has been a true key for Iberia Bank and the success of our branding. And um, it, it's never the same twice. We, we, it's not a model that just constantly stays the same. So you always have to make sure you know what's going on and how you want to continue to stay at the forefront of people's minds of your products and services and what you have to offer. So. Um, and speaking of branding, we left you all a gift at your table. Um, if you're wondering what that is, JD, there was kind of a little contest going on at our table. It's a phone wallet. I tried to give money, but um, they, they wouldn't let me bring any. So I hope that's useful for you, and uh, look forward to Q&As later. Thank you. That's an image we don't need to see during lunch. <laughs> well, first of all, it's great to be here. It's good to see everyone. I know a lot of people in the room, so thanks for having us. It's not lost on me that we are in the Walnut Room. It's a little embarrassing. Only thing worse than that would have been the pistachio room. But uh, I want to thank Jan for having us. Uh, this is always fun to get out and talk about business. I am super passionate about what I do. I love selling pecans, I love promoting Louisiana, I love promoting the South, and I love talking about our wonderful food culture here in Louisiana. So thank you, Jan, and it's good to see so many of y'all today. Um, I'm gonna start with a couple of quotes that I came up on a while back, and they make a lot of sense for us and probably for what a lot of you are doing in the market today. The first one reads, good marketing makes the company looks smart, but great marketing makes the customer feel smart. The second quote was by Maya Angelou, and she read, or she quoted, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Feel, and that's the common denominator between both of those quotes, feel. At Cane River Pecan Company, we have two audiences that we like to speak to. We have a corporate audience and we have a consumer audience. We're very fortunate that pecans, on their own, people love to have. They love to eat them, they love to cook with them, they use them as ingredients. And as a gift, when you cover them in chocolate or you honey roast them, uh, they can be used as a great gift. So we have these two audiences that we're always trying to speak to, and it gets a little gets a little quirky at times. I, I see some of the folks in the room today are from my ad agency here in town, BBR, which by the way, they do a great job uh, if you're looking for an ad agency. But uh, we struggle with this. And so internally, our slogan at Cane River is we wanna be corporate focused, but we wanna be consumer friendly because our product can be used by two different constituencies. But try to make people feel a certain way so when you sell them a good product, something they can associate with, like we do here in Louisiana with our food culture, 
You know, I don't know the first time I had a crawfish or my first sip of a gumbo or the first time maybe I had a daiquiri. Well, I remember that, first time I had a daiquiri. But a lot of people don't remember the first time we had any of those things in this culture that we live here in Louisiana. But we know it makes us feel good. And being a part of a food culture is important when you're selling food. So we want to make people feel good. We want the consumers to feel good about buying a quality product but we want to make our business constituencies feel good about giving a quality product. Because we really feel like we're in a business partnership with companies. When a company comes to us to buy our products, we feel like we are a brand extension. I feel like I'm a brand extension of Iberia Bank when Iberia Bank gives our product away. So it's very important that we make Judy feel good by giving away Cane River pecans. So I want y'all to keep acquiring and keep sending pecans. Good for business. We were gathered today to talk about influencing the influencers. And I thought about that and what kind of marketing is that? And the kind of marketing that is is that it identifies targets and it, it, we identify and target individuals that have an influence over potential buyers. So for Cane River, we divide that group into three different basically three different groups, those audiences. The first group is a traditional group of people that we're trying to reach through traditional forms of advertising, I should say. TV producers, editors, magazines and newspapers, publishers. We want to tell our story to those folks so they can pick that story up and push it to their readership or their viewership. The second group that we want to uh, tackle it, today it's more important than ever is the social media aspect is trying to get on front of in front of bloggers and other digital media platforms like Pinterest snapchat Facebook LinkedIn um, these are all very important platforms and we're struggling with that now what do we do with this platform what kind of content do we want to put on these platforms and then the third group is the sales folks that we deal with the Owners of companies, they influence what their company does. Sales directors, marketing directors, team leaders, office managers have a lot of influence. So we always want to talk to those folks too. So when we talk about influencing influencers, we're talking about these types of groups and how we divide them and how we push our marketing message to these three constituencies. So that's kind of our approach and, and I mean, I want to leave some time for Q&A, and, um, and I will tell you, but I, will, I, want, I do want to finish on this, on this um, point, because it talks a little bit about social media, and it's such a growing platform, and a lot of us in this room, I'm looking around, the millennials kind of have a handle on this, most of us don't, uh, that are in this room. You know, I, I, the young folks that are coming up, we call them digital natives, and we're all dig digital immigrants. I don't know if you've heard that before, but that's how I feel. Uh, especially at my house with my nine-year-old and 11-year-old teaching me how to do things on social media. But, you know, it used to be that a brand, you know, we used to be able to tell people what a brand is. If you're in charge of your branding or your marketing uh, as an owner of a company, a marketing director, we would tell the public what our brand is. But today, it's what the customers are telling each other with all the sharing that's going on on social media. So we have to really make sure that we're making a positive influence on the right people so that they'll tell their people with the social media tools about our products and our services. So it's, it's becoming extremely important that you acknowledge what's going on on social media and it, even though it looks like games to you because your kids are on it, it's not a game. It's for real and it's, it's here to stay for a long, long time. So I encourage all of y'all to try to em embrace it and learn as much about it as you can. So. That's just a little taste of what we're doing in the pecan business. And it's also not lost on me today that Patrick's from New Iberia, I'm from New Iberia, and it's Iberia Bank. We got a lot of New Iberia influence going on here. Um, Jan's going to talk to you. We left some pecan samples on the, on the table, too. And I'll just say this before we get into what Jan's going to talk about in a little bit. You know, this is another example of how when I get out into the community and I can have a brand extension, it's coming to events like this and making sure that our products are on the table. The biggest brand ambassador that I have for my company is my product. And it tastes really good. And it needs to be in your mouth. 
So I have to bring it to places like this so you can try it and then uh, say, you know what, I know it's good because I was at that meeting at the oil center and it, I had it and it was fantastic. So uh, thanks, appreciate it.